everybody, it's Brock, and we got a brand new episode of All About. This has been a very highly requested video to do, and we're learning all about Acroporas. Acroporas come with a wide variety of colors and variations. Just looking them up on Google, I mean, you will see hundreds of different names for them that come out, passion fruits and electric blues and just all kinds of different variations, almost like Zoas, where once a new color comes out, a new name gets dropped on them and a pretty price tag gets slapped on it as well. Jumping right into it, Acroporas will usually cost you about $20 to get a frag for your basic colors. But as you start to look for more unique colorations and larger pieces, you can spend hundreds of dollars just trying to get one of these in your tank for a nice colony. Hair level, now it is difficult to take care of these Acros. These are a very sought for coral but one that is not very easy to take care of in the tank just because it is very sensitive to the things that change in the tank. And we'll get into ways that will make it a lot easier on you to actually keep these alive in your tank. Temperature, that you do keep it about 72 to 78. Now, you know, my coral tank, I always like to keep it right on 78 degrees. Usually in the winter months, you put your heaters in there and that'll keep them just right. DKH, 8 to 12. pH, 8.1 to 8.4. And your salinity, 1.023 to 1.025. Colors on them, like I said, I mean, there is every color on the rainbow for these. If you're looking for any kind of wild coloration on a coral, I'm betting you it is going to be on an acro out there. Diet, so they are photosynthetic, but I do really recommend spot feeding weekly they almost require it just because they need plenty of nutrition to keep a healthy structure and also keeps their colors looking very vibrant now feeding them's pretty easy like you see in the video we're spotting feeding some liquid food i think this is reef roids in the tube that we're feeding them but you can feed them all kinds of stuff there's a lot of different liquid foods out there that you can feed and you can either turn your power heads off and sprinkle it right over top of them like we're doing here or you can just get some oyster feast Put it in a little cup and pour it in the power head. That way it blows all over the tank for your corals. There's a bunch of different foods you can get. My favorites usually are reef roids and oyster feast just because they've always shown great growth when using them. But there's tons of stuff out there. As long as it's a good liquid food that you can put in the tank for them to feed on, you'll see those little polyps come out and feed like crazy. Origin. So most of the time these are aquacultured. Usually when you're buying these, it's from somebody's tank, but originally they do come from the Indo-Pacific area along that Great Barrier Reef. Venomous, so yes, they are a very venomous coral. However, it isn't from sweeper tentacles. It's actually just their skin that can be very venomous and especially towards other SPS corals. So if you have multiple SPS corals in your tank, you definitely want to put them in spots around the tank where they can grow out and not touch each other because if they do touch each other, they will sting the fire out of each other and one of them will lose and one of them will come out a winner. And you definitely don't want to bleach out one of your SPS corals. However, if something like a torch or a frog spawn, anemone with those big tentacles swinging around the tank, if one of those actually hit the SPS, it would win and it would kill your SPS. So you also want to take care of that and make sure he's not near one of those because if they start getting stung by one of those, they will not survive it. Acros tend to grow towards the light which in turn creates a shadow from anything below it. So if you are putting them somewhere high, just expect them branches to grow in certain ways where it will cover up light below it. Placement, you know, usually people will put them up high. That way they're not around anything and they're growing towards the light. It looks really pretty up there at the top of the tank. It also has a lot of high current up there usually at the top, so it keeps them really healthy. And it also just puts them in places where other corals aren't around them. Now current, you definitely want a really strong current. They have very high currents in the ocean, so you want to mimic that in your tank. This helps them feed throughout the day, and it also keeps that algae off from growing on their skin, because if it is a low current spot in the tank, there's different type of algae that will grow on their skin, and it will cause them to bleach, and of course, prevent them from actually getting all the light that they need. So plenty of current will keep them very happy. depending on the strength of your current, can change how they actually grow. So a strong current will usually create an SPS coral that's very dense and much thicker than a SPS in less current. So you end up with these much wider branches spanning off of them. You'll see cases where an acro even will look like a chalice at times 
because it'll just keep growing flat as it adapts to that current blowing around in your tank. Now, as these acros do grow in your tank, you definitely want to keep an eye on your current. Sometimes you might need to change it or add an additional power head to the tank because if you end up with a great big branch of acro growing and the current's hitting right on it, anything behind it is going to have less current. So you might have to put a power head on the opposite end of the tank. That way it's still blowing and hitting that other one. Lighting, of course, you definitely want high lighting. They really require some intense lighting to stay alive. Most people's tanks are running about 300 par if you're looking for a specific level or even higher than that. Usually you can achieve this by having T5 bulbs, metal halides, or really high output LEDs. The current ones you're seeing here are actually under two Hydra 26s with an additional T5 bulb running at the top of the tank as well, which helps it achieve that high intensity lighting while also having all of the colors in the LED to make it look really pretty and it's helped them grow very quickly. Tank size, of course, doesn't matter. You just want to make sure you're keeping all your levels in check. Why is it so hard to take care of these acros? So they are extremely sensitive to changes in the water. They usually need a stable, established reef tank to go into. Two parameters you want to keep as low as possible. And for me, I like to keep them on zero as long as I can are your phosphates and nitrates. Those coming up too high will eventually spike and end up bleaching your coral. And you just do not want that for them. Because once those levels get too high, they're going to be the first ones to go. Stay on top of those water changes and change your filter media. There's tons of filter media out there you can put down in your sump or in the back of your filters. And it'll help suck out all those phosphates and nitrates that run through. And it'll help you so that you're not having to constantly clean the tank. Now for reef parameters, you definitely want to keep up with your calcium, your alkalinity, and your magnesium. Calcium usually run about 420 or higher in a reef tank. Alkalinity, keep it between 8 and 12, and then your magnesium, about 1250. So a thing to remember is there is a seesaw effect between calcium and alkalinity. So as you do raise that alkalinity level or raise that calcium level, the other one is going to fall. So if you end up having alkalinity that is too low, you'll notice your calcium is way high. And usually if you keep your magnesium on that 1250 range, it'll help you stabilize the other two. So if you notice those calcium and alkalinity cannot get right, usually you can check your magnesium and see that it's not on par with what it should be. Also keeping those three in check is gonna help your coral grow a lot faster. It's gonna help them grow more healthy. And it's also gonna help your tank stay more stable. Definitely want to buy some coral dip because at times these acros are going to bleach. It just happens. They either get stung by something, they start growing algae on them, or they end up having something like a flatworm infestation on them. So definitely get some coral dip before you buy these because you'll want to have it on hand if you notice your colony is starting to be affected. And you can either frag it off or if you're able to take that colony off, put it in some water into some coral dip. It'll really help clean them off so that they can go back in the tank, heal up. And keep growing. Now, of course, there's tons of different little parasites that can get onto these acros. Flatworms are one of the most common ones you'll see, and they will eat the flesh on top of them, causing them to bleach. And it makes it really hard for them to grow back. Usually, get fish that can eat them, or get different kinds of crustaceans that can eat them, and it'll really help you out a lot. Usually, wrasse are the ones that love those flatworms, so check into some wrasse that you can get. So that they can be keeping your SPS corals clean. Now fragging. Fragging an acro can be really easy. They tend to grow in branches. So if you see one start to span off into a Y. You can usually cut one of the edges of the Y off. And then glue that to a little frag plug. You end up having another acro colony start to grow. Now always like I like to recommend. Is cut larger pieces rather than little tiny small pieces. Because if you have a larger piece. It has a lot more polyps on it. That will help it heal from the injury sooner. Acclimating is also very important to these SPS corals as they can be very sensitive to new tanks. That could also lead to bleaching if not done right. Whatever you're acclimating your fish in, usually I'll double it for these SPS corals. And also check your lights because usually lights will have an acclimation period so they're not just going into that 100% very high par level light. 
and that'll help them get used to the light before actually experiencing the full-blown LEDs. If you don't have the option for an actual acclimation period on your lights, usually you can put them in at night. That way, in the morning, they're getting used to the lights coming on at their lower levels and then eventually getting to their higher levels. So is it doing okay? Is my SPS, is my Acro growing well and being healthy? So usually you can tell this by seeing lots of coloration on them. They're not bleaching out. There's not white spots in the middle of their body. If there's white on the tips, that's usually for good growth. So don't be aware and afraid of that. But if you notice white spots in other areas of the coral, you definitely want to see if they're bleaching out. Their polyps are also going to come out all over the coral. These polyps are out for feeding. So if you start to notice the polyps are not coming out, you definitely want to check your water levels first to make sure they're in check. And then you also want to make sure nothing's bothering it. If it is starting to get stung, those polyps will go in. If it's being bullied by a fish, those polyps will go in. If there's not enough current on them and they have algae growing on top of them, that will also make their polyps go in. So just pay attention to any of those kind of effects for them. Just make sure their colors look good and their polyps are out and there's no bleaching on their body other than their tips. And you'll notice and keep up with how healthy they're actually growing. Now that is everything you need to know, just a good high level on how to take care of acros in your tank. Now I know it is a lot, but they are a difficult coral to take care of. But the main things to take away is your placement. You want them away from any other acro corals because they will sting each other. Your current needs to be really strong. That's going to help them feed and it's going to keep that other algae from growing on their skin. And your lighting, you definitely want to make sure that lighting is high and tense for them. That way they can grow well. And then also keep up with your parameters because I'm telling you those parameters are the key factor to keeping this coral alive and healthy. Keep that stable, stable parameters and you'll have a very stable and healthy growing coral. Nitrates and phosphates, keep them at zero. And then your calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium, keep those in check and you will have a very happy coral. As long as you can feed them at least weekly, you will see a lot of growth in them. If y'all do have any more questions down below or have some experience with your own acros in your tank, please leave it down below. The more we learn from each other, the better we'll be able to take care of this coral. Hope y'all have a wonderful week this week, and I will see y'all later. everybody it's Brock and today's video is sponsored by Dream Team Forever. Make sure to check out our website as we just released the first ever All About Tees that feature 30 fish and inverts from the series. Click the link in the description to get some for you and your family.